Welcome to Lacrosse Classified on the LAX All-Stars Podcast Network. Your home for the latest news from the National Lacrosse League and Indoor Lacrosse. Now, let's talk some lacrosse with your hosts, Jake Elliott and Evan Schemenauer. Lacrosse fans, it's Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Lacrosse Classified right here on the LAX All-Stars Podcast Network. This is episode number 61. Thanks for joining us as always. As it's Jake Elliott and Evan Schemenauer back with you once again. Happy New Year, Evan, right off the top. Yeah, 2020 is upon us. What the heck? It's a little (laughs) strange to think about that a decade has come and gone. We kind of reminisced last week a little bit about it, so we don't want to do that here. But I got to say, man, here right off the get-go, I am so pumped about the two guests that we have on episode 61. Now, thinking back for my man, Brad Challoner, I probably should have tried to schedule my man, Eric Penny, who wears the jersey number what, Evan? EP61. Episode 61, Eric Penny wears 61. So if I was thinking in advance, that would have been the play right there. But we got two fantastic guests for episode 61, Evan. First up, from the Saskatchewan Rush, the director of the Shatler Lacrosse Academy, one Jeff Shatler will join us here in about uh, 15 minutes from now. And then one of our favorite lacrosse players, Evan. He is my favorite lacrosse player right now. He's mine too. Yeah, the best to watch on the planet, play the game. From the Georgia Swarm and the Iroquois Nationals, of course, number four, Lyle Thompson on the program here this week. I cannot wait for these two conversations. They are going to be fantastic. Big show lined up for you as we've got to get right into it right off the top here, Evan. It's time and extra excited for this week's Who We Had. Would you like to share the news here, Evan, or would you rather yours truly deliver? Well, 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 let me explain what all went down. So first off, I reminded you about two or three hours before Mm. game time. You haven't submitted your picks yet, right? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe I should have kept my mouth shut. But anyways, so what happens is there's only two games, two heavy favorites. About 80% of people had the two-game combination correct. Okay, so then we go to the highest scoring team. Well, about two thirds of the people had the right combination, still had the right team. So we're still got a half of the people in the pool. We get down to the second tie break. Top scoring player. That's Kevin Crowley. One goal, six assists. Check. You know, so now, but the thing was, he was also the, the person that was picked by 40% of people. We still got 30 people in this race we go to goal scored and yeah you were off by one i was off by four so it was it was uh it was uh you won the week pardon me evan <laughs> we don't need to talk I about that did, did, didn't come through clearly for me just what was that last well uh, but but what we did is that uh, because you're not eligible to win the prize <laughs> the second place guy won it now get this two people uh, had man both games the right team, the right player, a couple goals off on the goal difference, and both of them got their picks in early. One got it in about two hours earlier. And that's what it all came down to. So uh, did you hear that, Hutton Jackson? I know your 8-0 and was, was pretty cool and all of that, but yours truly, week 6, 2020, mark it down in your calendars, the day that Jumbo won who you got and and the scenario to get it done Evan you know not to not to hurt my elbow pat in my back here but to nail literally the 49 I had 48 total the 49th goal I think was an empty netter at the end it was a kind of a garbage goal so to to really to outdo the rest of the people here all the odds that I overcame to prevail this week 
was, I think, more impressive than just okay. picking eight winners straight up. All but the get, math get, that went in and the prediction, all, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty special. It's pretty remember, special. 30 people had it going into the third tiebreak, which yeah. is Over a hundred entrants involved, and and you know there's some smart Mm -hmm. people out there, uh, obviously that had the same top score, they had the same team scoring the most, Mm -hmm. all of that. But uh, when it really came down to the to the pressure moment of selecting the total amount of goals, that's where the true knowledge and expertise (laughs) really shone through. (laughs) Forty eight. So without, Here's the other crazy okay. thing. If we look at the overall standings, right? My daughter, Dorinna, now she gets zero help from me, absolutely zero, is sitting in second place. She's three games ahead of me. <laughs> right? I don't know. So yeah. maybe she made her picks already. Maybe I got to tell everybody what her picks are because, well, you know, she's doing better than I am. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a long, it's a marathon. That's the other thing that we need to discuss here, Evan. Oh, but we should say that our winner, as I am not obviously taking the prize from Stampede Tack and Western Wear. So it came down to two guys. Sorry, Jimmer. Uh, get your picks in earlier is the lesson learned here. Uh, the winner, did we mention Did we mention the name? I don't think we did, did we? We haven't. Okay, it is Mr. Walter W. Green, all the way down there, College Park in Maryland. Uh, the man is a lawyer, Evan. We got lawyers listening in from Maryland on Lacrosse Classified. I absolutely love it. Congratulations, Walter Green, because you got your picks in two hours earlier than my man Jim Else. You get the prize pack. Uh, we'll set you up, all courtesy of Stampede Tech and Western Wear. Uh, by the way, shop online at stampede.ca. We're shopping online. It's still shopping local. Wrangler deal is still in effect. You know the deal by now. Get 10 bucks off any men's or women's pair of jeans or pants there from the folks at Wrangler at Stampede. All right, Evan, uh, enough <laughs> enough of the satire. I I uh, I had some fun with that. I hope you guys know that I was just uh, – had my tongue firmly planted in my cheek there. Uh, but I'm pretty proud of the win, I must say. That's uh, – you know, that's, that's the first time for me that I've actually won the week. So pretty cool. Um, let's get to the games, Evan. Let's, let's do that. Uh, first up, Philadelphia and New York hooking up, and – I saw some improvement here from the Riptide, and this one was kind of a back-and-forth affair. There were some big leads, and then the tie at 12-12, and Philly gets a few late uh, as they come up with a big road victory to follow up that game against Calgary. Here's the thing that's starting to be a trend here with teams is that they get a big lead going into half against the Riptide, and then they forget to play the second half. And the rush went, what, 29 minutes into the second half without a goal. Philly had a huge lead. I think it was even, what, 9-4, 10-4 at one stage. And, you know, 10-6 at the half, and then they let New York back in it. Now, good on New York for not giving up on this game. (laughs) You know, they almost had it, you know, but still a little bit short. Here's an interesting thing. I don't think I've ever seen Trevor Baptiste with numbers this low before. Just 17 of 29. He, you know, he was just over 50 percent in this game. Uh, so a little interesting. But he, what he not he netted a couple goals again. So wow, well, I was just going to say, never ma- never back. mind the faceoff numbers for one beast Baptiste, PVL athlete, by the way. Uh, he potted two, which is a season high for him. Uh, a career he high in a season. Goal total. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's, you know, 50%. Okay. But the two G's from Baptiste, uh, who's had lots of opportunities, kind of getting those opportunities off of winning clean draws, the pick and pop, and off you go, but hasn't been able to bury. And now I think finding a little confidence here with uh, with two in one game. This could be the, the mm-hmm. start of a breakout here, goal scoring for Baptiste, because he's going to get his chances. He's going to get, you know, two or three opportunities just off of winning the face off that cleanly. And the other thing, and we'll get into this later on, but uh, Alex Bouquet struggled. 
And I think this is the, one of the major differences right now that New York has got to sort out is Bouquet has struggled when they put Goa Abrams in the net. He struggled. Mm. You know, I don't know if there's many second string or third string goaltenders out there that are better than Bouquet. Not a whole lot of options, but they've got to get this sorted out because they, they won't win games if the goaltending isn't solid. Listen, here, here's what I'm going to say about Bouquet. And, and I think, you know, it's, it's pretty evident. Fitness is not his top priority. That's not the type of goaltender he is. He's more of an angles guy and, you know, make sure you're in the right spot. But he's very, very athletic for his size. He's got quick reactions and he's, you know, flexible and he's, and he can move around pretty good. And I think, it's just taken Alexis a little bit longer, but here's what's going to happen in New York is that he is their guy. So Alexis knows he's going to play. They know Book's going to play. And if he's got to go through those growing pains to figure it out with live bullets flying at him, because he's never really had the opportunity to get a string of games as a starter. And once you get into that rhythm where you play five, six, seven games in a row, then you might start to click a little bit. And and it doesn't help, obviously, with, with not having a top flight defense in front of him. He's going to see a lot of rubber. He's going to have a lot of open looks coming at him. But I think this will all serve Alexis Bouquet well in the future that he's going to get this experience, get those reps, and they're just going to hang their hat here for this season and just let him ride through it. And I and I think he'll figure it out. This guy won Minto Cups. He's, he's been right up there in the numbers in summer leagues as far as good goaltenders, but it's an extra little bit on the on the pipes, obviously, with the bigger net, and mm-hmm. then you don't have the big Woody in front of you. The, the in big Woody, the I think, is a big problem. Right, and, and yeah. it just, you know, it took Doug Jameson, I would say, a year or two, to figure that out, I think Alexis Bouquet will figure it out as well. It just takes some guys a little bit longer. Let's move on here, Evan. We got uh, Jeff Shatler coming up in just over five, six minutes from now. Uh, game number two, game of the week there in Colorado. And the Mammoth continue to impress here as they get it done this time in the Loud House and look pretty good doing it. Well, a poor start, though. And this is the thing is they were down because we were watching the end of the other game. I turned this one on. It's 4 nothing Vancouver. Yeah. What the heck? Like, we're opening five minutes. Yeah, you don't Vancouver normally see. Run. Yeah, you don't normally. Sorry, no. I mean, you don't normally see. Not only teams get off to a slow start like that, but then be able to battle back and dig themselves out of that hole. And, and the Mammoth were able to do that. But But the thing for Vancouver was they were up 6-2. Within 30 seconds of the second quarter, yeah. and for the finish. last, they, they got one goal a quarter after that, and that's just not going to do it. Um, Bob Snyder, now they brought him in as a face-off specialist. He's one of the, he used to be one of the best, but 50 percent just not going to cut it. Uh, but you know, Vancouver only gave up one power play the whole game. If there's a saving grace. There's one for you. And also, Logan Schuss finally started to find his touch. Yeah. He's, he didn't have many points in the first several games, but he finally started to do it. And we talked about this before. Vancouver used to be out loose balled like crazy. Yeah. Once again, they out loose balled Colorado by 20, but the number of shots they missed were also pretty high yeah I, I you know you get a 6-2 lead on the road you got to finish that game and and that's a tough one for Vancouver and I feel I feel bad for Eric Penny that I think he's been pretty good in goal and just hasn't really been rewarded and you go back to that San Diego game being a tough one but um good on Colorado and usually you know if you're gonna have success against the Mammoth it is getting a quick start on them and and getting to Ward early uh hashtag trade Ward by the way and and, and I uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but uh, you know what I mean. If you can get a lead on Colorado, then I think you're in good shape. But they were able to dig themselves out. But you can't if you're Vancouver. You can't go three quarters scoring three goals. And and the Mammoth just kind of chipped away, chipped away, and and got it done late. Uh, and but I mean, they they've been impressive here, Evan. As I think they and the New England Black Wolves kind of have to be the story of the young NLL season so far. And Halifax. Yeah. Well, I mean. 
But Halifax, I mean, they had two games against expansion teams, but you got to play the teams that's in front of you. But then they blew out Buffalo in Bandit Land. You got to respect that. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I'll give you that one. We good on those two games. So two and zero oh for yours truly. Two and zero oh for you as well. So we are still. I'm still one game ahead of you. Well, I mean, that was kind of by design because. There was not uh, an upset that was really worth taking, and even the numbers that we saw with who you got, I think 10% took New York, 15% took Vancouver. But you know, this week, there's one game, I kid you not, I've looked at the who you got <laughs> numbers for who you know, the, the entries that have come in. One team is 51%, the other one's 49 You could literally flip a coin on this one. So there's... It'll be interesting. There's some, yeah, there's some intriguing, like Colorado at Halifax. I still don't know who I'm I'm picking there. Like, I don't. I may have to go to the coin. I may have to go to the coin in week seven, Evan. But, I mean, the, there's there's two games that I think I'm pretty confident. All right, let's, taking, let's discuss it later. Not. Let's discuss it later. We don't want to get off track here. We got to get into something else. Uh and we don't have much time to do it this week. So let's do it now. It's time to go under review. It's time for under review presented by G Wilson construction. Each week, Jake and Evan answer a listener's question or break down an unusual call that happened in a game. The challenge flag has been thrown. So now it's time to take the matter under review. Under review, brought to you by our friends at G. Wilson Construction, building fine custom homes. Uh, I've, I've been talking about that that little chalet up in Whistler, Evan. I'm actually going to head up to Whistler in a couple of weeks and, and go have a walkthrough on this thing. I can't wait to see it up close and personal. I'll have a report for you when I return, but I'm going to head up to Whistler in a couple of weeks and, and check this thing out with the man himself, uh, Mr. Wilson. So I'm looking forward to To that, uh, goalie depth in the National Lacrosse League is what we're going to go under review with here, Evan. And I don't know about you, but when I look around the National Lacrosse League and more so look at the, using air quotes here, backup goaltender position, and then kind of look at the next level of goaltenders wherever that may be in the in the major league or the wla or the all i don't know how much nll caliber i see and we're talking about going to three more teams in the next three years here which is six more nine more if you want to count practice roster and i'm i'm just not sure where the goaltenders come from it's the biggest issue when we look at expansion is, you know, is depth, but it's goaltending depth. And one of the problems is, is that when we look to the depth of the league and where a lot of these players have come from the last, say, five years, a lot of it comes from the United States. But these are field players that are coming into the box game. And this is the one problem is you cannot take your field talents in goal and translate them into the box game. There's only one guy that's been able to do both. That's still in work. Evan and Kirk, you, I want to say, is is a heck of a field lacrosse goalie as well. Okay. And I'm sure there's others, to be quite but, frank. But, yes, but at a high, high know, level. But Blaze Reardon, who was the top goaltender in the PLL, doesn't have the skills for a box lacrosse goaltender. This is one of the issues why there's depth problems. And, you know, you and I have had a lot of conversations with Neil Rushka, who... He's the dad of Lane Ruska. It's one of these up-and-coming goaltenders mm. likely to be drafted in a couple of years from now. They're excited because with the number of expansion teams coming in, by the time Lane gets to the draft, Opportunity. there's going to be there's going to be six more spots open or nine more spots open. So there's a lot of chances there. And we think about it, let's be honest here. If there were still nine teams, which we were at a couple of years ago, Alex Bouquet is a backup somewhere. Zach Higgins is still a backup in Buffalo. Um, you know, Steve Fryer is still probably a backup in Colorado. Now, to get to the next level, you Maybe know, there's, even add there's, there's, there's a drop to that off. list. Right. 
so there's a major drop off and but it also opened up opportunity like for example a guy like cam dunkerley right who now gets a chance to be on a practice roster with the saskatchewan rush if if there's fewer teams you know I don't think he's he's even I don't on know, the Evan. You know, like I, <laughs> I, I I've seen Cam. Like obviously, I've I watched him in the Minto, and, and then I've I've been around him, and and even took a few shots on him. Not that my shots any any test to tell how good a goaltender is, but I I've watched him pretty closely, and, and ta- actually talked to Derek Keenan about him, and, and Derek really likes him, and I and so do I, and he's a smaller. Uh, smaller frame, slight guy, but he takes up a lot of net when he's in there, and and having the small stick between his legs has not been a problem for him. And I think that kid's got a real future. So I don't I don't know if he's the best example to use in that regard, but I know what you're saying. And and, and like look at like they, Saskatchewan's a good example where they kind of saw the goaltending situation starting to play out and decided to to part ways with Tyler Carlson, who's still in the league, but thought as much of Adam shoot for their future to make that decision at the backup position, which you don't really don't really see teams do. No, you don't. And when you look at other guys like New York struggled to even find a backup, like they, we didn't know who the backup was even going to be at one stage. So when they announced their initial roster, yeah. they had one goaltender on there. So, so I mean, I think there's, there's some guys around that, you know, like a Zach Boychuk, or I think of a Charles Claxton, or uh, I think Brandon Humphrey might be on a on a practice roster somewhere. But there, there's guys kicking around. But I just, you know, until until the the Colorado Box League and and the Ohio Box League and and some of these kind of junior boxla USA boxla programs which are fantastic start to produce box goaltenders out of the USA that that's where the rubber is going to kind of hit the road and we haven't seen and it's coming he's coming I guarantee you he's coming but we haven't seen that goaltender emerge from those leagues yet and here's the maybe my final point on it is right now goaltenders are not drafted early they're typically drafted late second, third like round. Even Del Bianco went 20th, 21st overall. Right. And Dougie Jameson went 19th, right? So uh, I think with the depth problem that's starting to emerge, you're going to have to start taking goaltenders in the first round. Put a priority on a good it. One. Yeah. I mean, if you see a good one come out of junior, you you can't. And you need goaltending depth. You can't. You have to, you have to take the pick because you know somebody else – is going to. All right, uh, enough of us. Let's get to quarter number two, Evan. We got a great guest on the other side. Jeffrey Shatler of the Saskatchewan Rush and Shatler Lacrosse Academy will join us next year on episode 61 of Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All-Stars Podcast Network. The Vancouver Warriors game at Rogers Arena sounds like this. Jones shoots and he scores! Diving effort from Mitch Jones. Nothing's monotone. Lee and Beers go crashing into the crease. Nothing's boring. Now we're going to have a fight. It's the captain squaring off. And at Vancouver Warriors games, loads up. Nothing's offside. Tries a shot and he scores! Experience it for yourself. Vancouver Warriors tickets are available now. Tickets starting from 1995. Visit VancouverWarriors.com slash tickets today. Hey, this is Bradley Cree of the Toronto Rock. You're listening to Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All Star Podcast Network. Going the game one podcast at a time. Welcome back to Lax Class, ladies and gentlemen. Jake Elliott, Evan Sheminar with you. Just heard from, uh, you heard from our friends there at the Vancouver Warriors. I know they're not uh, our next guest friends, but there are friends here on Lax Class, Evan. Vancouver Warriors, uh, their next game comes up this Friday, January the 17th, 7 p.m. start for you folks here in the Lower Mainland. And it is beach night. Biz Nasty's back in town. Uh, They're going to do some things here. If you can't find uh, time for a trip to Mexico, we'll join the Warriors beach party night, sip on a Corona while you watch Logie and the boys battle the mammoth. Winter get, winter getaways or warmer weather will be given out throughout the night here. So uh, a chance to win a couple of trips as well. Cheap drinks. All brought to you by Corona and the Vancouver Warriors. Uh, Warriors game. Get out there. 
And check out a Vancouver Warriors game. Uh, Jeff Schaller on the program. Welcome back. I don't know if you've ever – I've talked to you on Rush Hour Shouts. I don't know if we've ever done lacrosse classified together, have we? This might be the first time, man. No, nope. we, we did it last year. Okay. Evan, Evan's got the stats. He says we did it last year. I know you're, uh, you're on your car phone right now, hands-free on your way back from Moose Jaw. So uh, I appreciate you doing this. Make sure you're focused on the road while we're talking lacrosse here, okay? Oh, no doubt. Always, always. It's only straight roads out in Saskatchewan. So don't worry about that. <laughs> right. Um, how's it going out in Saskatchewan, man? You're coming back from Moose Jaw. We were kind of talking before we got on air here that you've more or less, you've covered the gamut of the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, from Moose Jaw to Nipawin, give me give me the landscape of Saskatchewan lacrosse as a whole, and and maybe where some of the stronger pockets are, and maybe where the the game is new to some new folks uh, around the province. Well, where I spent most of my time is out in Sandy Buffalo. Uh, you know, we got a lot of good talent, a lot of good kids coming up. You know, they're young, they love the game, they want to work hard, they want to train. Uh, we have a good program coming together. Uh, I don't know if you've known, but the junior team won last year, so they're going into, they're defending their title this year. Uh, we're bringing a lot of good players in. Bouchard's got a really good program. You know, Swift Current's got a good program. Weyburn. You know, Southern Lacrosse is all I've really known. I haven't been out to Saskatoon that whole, uh, whole bunch, but, you know, we also have the Tri Lacrosse program running through the SLA, you know, trying to get all the kids involved, the public and Catholic schools. And then all... all of course, we were just talking about the reserves out in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. You know, it takes a while, it takes a while to get there. But you know what, though, even when you get out there and you put a ki- uh, stick in a kid's hand, it's never even seen it before. And then all of a sudden, he's making fakes and shooting the ball. You know, 80, 80 kilometers an hour. You're like, it comes natural. Just kid it just, just comes natural to some of these kids. And, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm the guy looking around the province with the diamond in the rough um, and. You know, just to bring them over to my program and try to develop them and hopefully get them out to BC, Ontario, you know, maybe on a national team. Uh, you know, I just got a call from my buddy Jason Miracle out of Ontario, and he was just asking me if I had any uh, Aboriginal athletes that could maybe make the Iroquois national team. Oh, for so the like, NAG, yeah. Yeah, for the NAG team. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for these kids out here, and I just want to give them, you know, what I had when I was a kid. Yeah, well, let me let, let's ask you about that right off the top here, Jeff. Before we get into the rush stuff and, and all the rest of it, um, the Shallow Lacrosse Academy it's still pretty new as far as how long it's been around. But I know you've made really great strides as, as far as how many people are involved in it now and how how busy it keeps you. Uh, tell us about the Shallow Lacrosse Academy because I know you're doing big things with that as well. Well, right now we have, uh, what do we have? We have 93 kids in the Regina program. We have, man, I think, honestly, I have about 200 to 250 kids that I'm teaching right now. Uh, me and my buddy Chris, we discuss what I, you know, with the, not only the Shadow Lacrosse Academy, but, you know, with the Steady Buffalo program and the Charlie Cross program. Last year alone, I taught over 10,000 kids. Wow. Um, and that's crazy, you know, like, and it doesn't seem that much as you're doing 30 kids a class, but when you're doing eight classes in a day at 30 kids, uh, and then when you've got, you know, two or three different winter programs, private sessions, you know, the Shadow Lacrosse Academy is really, really taken off in that sense, um, especially in southern, Lacrosse, in southern uh, Saskatchewan. Um, it, 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 I didn't really think it was going to take off this much. Uh, but it really has, and I have a lot of people that are backing me. Um, you know, presidents of, you know, say, Waver and Lacrosse, you know, Swift Current, Danny Buffalo. I'm just trying to put together uh, an all-star team is basically my thought. I know it won't happen this year, but next year I'd like to put together an all-star team of the Southern Lacrosse Association and send them out to the American side to play in those box uh, championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my uh, that's my goal yeah. that we're going to try to uh, accomplish. I would love to try to do it all across the province, but obviously these teams need to practice. They can't just go out to the state and think they're going to do some damage when they don't practice together. Um, and I think that's what a lot that hurts a lot of teams that travel out stateside. They don't practice enough together. Yeah. They don't practice 
and then they go in and run into a, an American program, you know, that absolutely practices once a week throughout the year. Right. And it's almost like a, like a, a hockey program. Uh, they used to call them the Little Caesars, is what they had out of Ontario, Toronto. And they would come and play us, and they would absolutely kill us. Because <laughs> they were always playing, always, always playing together. Yeah. You know, yeah. It only makes sense. It only makes sense, man. Yeah. I remember what we... I remember us having a conversation a couple of years ago, and it's like, there's a there's a market out here, and especially on the reserve, and I, I, I'm stunned it took off as much as it did. Now, let's get to the rush for a second here. Um, biggest change this year, three lefty, two righty sets. How tough has it been to adapt to this, and have you ever played in a three lefty set before? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to you have to be able to adapt. I, I know me growing up, my father always said, you know, if you're able to play defense and offense, you are more valuable to a team. And if you're able to pick up a loose ball and set hard picks rather than just score, you know, again, you're you're you're, you're almost able to make any team. So you have to be able to adapt as a, as an athlete, not as just as a lacrosse player, but just as an athlete in general. And wherever I can fit in for this team, because they've got some good good players. And obviously, me playing 15 years into this league, I just want to keep playing and help my team win. So, whoever they want me to play, whatever they need me to do, I'll do. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if there's three, it doesn't matter if it's a two man game, whatever it takes, that's what will win championships. I believe that's what will win, uh, bring a winning attitude towards uh, the rest of the year. Speaking with Jeff Shatler, and I know you're still uh, you're still rocking the warp shots uh, that with that black on black look. What what makes you want to use that r- rather than a normally strung lacrosse stick? Man, I will tell you what how it happened. I said I would never use it, but you know, once you get used to a, a certain stick, it's hard to shake it. You know, uh, it, it has a great control. I've gotten used to it. I use it in all my camps because the kids love looking at the warp. It's a different look. It's, uh, you know, it's the next step in lacrosse sticks. So when I use it in a, in, a, in a winter program all week, and then I try to switch back to another stick, it just doesn't work that way. So I just decided to stick with it. Now that I've gotten used to it, it's my stick. I enjoy using it. It shoots where I want to. It's a little bit different release. But, man, once you get used to it, you know, a lot of players have said, once you get used to the stick, you won't want to go back. And there's some truth to it. And the one big thing is, when you're moving, when you're going, say, going down to the West Coast, uh, to the East, your stick, your pocket changes. Uh, at least with the warp, it doesn't change at all. Yeah. Same stick. I think so that's, that's big- really understated. Like, no matter what the temperature, where you know, East Coast, West Coast, humid, whatever, your stick is not changing. Yeah, no, it is locked in. Uh, the one thing, you know, like, um, you know, once you get used to it, it's hard to go back. It really is. And, uh, I've gotten used to it. Uh, I, and the one big thing about this, uh, me running all these programs out here, I have my stick in my hand every day. Like today I had two sessions. Tomorrow I have two sessions. Wednesday is two sessions. Thursday is one session. Get to see my wife that day. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> And then we, uh, you know, Friday, and then Saturday we're on the road again. So it's just, uh, it's across, across, across. I enjoy playing it. I know this is the next step in my life where I'm going to start coaching. So I'm enjoying the transition. Of, uh, but right now I'm enjoying playing and teaching it, you know, 24-7. That's basically what it is. Uh, I'm glad the holidays are over. Thank God. Expensive time of the year, as you guys know. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm out of that and uh, on to 2020, man. I'm happy, excited. happy wife, happy yeah. life, Shatler. We all know, uh, <laughs> we all know the drill. Hey, we won't keep you any longer. Focus on the road, there, buddy. And uh, best of luck down there in SoCal. We will talk to you for Prairie Pride Night. Uh, I hope with the the tractor jerseys are coming back for the date with the mammoth on the 18th. Oh, 100%. It's gonna be a good night. We're gonna get a big W at home. We owe it to our fans. Uh, lost the last two at home. We need to turn that uh, turn that around for sure. There you go. That was Jeff Shatler of the Saskatchewan Rush. Where's number 77 in your lucky program? And the director of the Shatler Lacrosse Academy, the veteran Evan, 15 years for Jeff Shatler. And a lot of people forget former league MVP as well. Yep. 
Yep, I know we're getting a little echo here, Evan, so we'll cut it there, and then we will be back on the other side. Lyle Thompson will join us here on Lacrosse Classified. Keep it right here on the Lax All-Stars Podcast Network. Pure Vita Labs is proud to bring you the highest quality sports supplements on the market. PVL products are 100% all-natural with no artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners. And the entire line is also Informed Choice certified. We designed all our products with the athlete in mind. We look forward to being a part of your athletic achievements, helping you push the bar higher, win at the highest levels, and set personal records for years to come. Hey, this is Kevin Crowley from the Philadelphia Wings. You're listening to Lax Clash, your go-to source for all things NLL and box cross. Welcome back to Lacrosse Classified here on the Lax All Stars Podcast Network. Jake Elliott, Evan Sheminar with you. Episode number sixty-one now features number four in your program for the Georgia Swarm and the Iroquois Nationals. It's one of our favorite guests to talk to on the podcast here, Evan Lyle Thompson. Welcome back to Lacrosse Classified, Lyle. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it is absolutely our pleasure. Um, it is a Monday. It is nine o'clock back there. I, I just want to start here, Lyle. I, I kind of know the, the rigors of a typical NLL weekend and how it works as far as your travel and when you're in and when you're out. But I want to know at the day in the life of Lyle Thompson, whether it be a Monday or a Thursday, walk me through from morning till night, a day in the life of Lyle Thompson away air quotes away from from the game yeah i mean um um i i usually wake up around seven o'clock i get my get my kids kids up and ready and and um we're homeschooling this year so so that's sort of a another load on on um me and the wife so we we get our kids up and how many right do you have us, well, you have four ready. kids if i'm not mistaken right Five, five, five of them. Okay, that's yeah, a line. And we're only we're only homeschooling the three older ones. Yeah, there's only one soon. We, we <laughs> what was that? One oh, more, yeah. you got a goalie, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, we uh, get them ready, get hit over to the gym. Um, we all go to the gym. There's a nice daycare there, and, and um, I I work out for about well, I. I do the training, the the heavy load portion of it for about an hour, and I run about for run for fifteen minutes and um, do treatment stuff for about half hour, and that includes like sauna, stretching, rolling out, stuff like that. Um, so I got it. I come home. <laughs> yeah, we're we're all now. I got to say this, Lyle. We're we're, we're we're all fascinated with your workout regimen. We we have kind of a group uh, of us media type and <laughs> and we're always marveling at how much water you drink per day, how much stretching and how long you work out. So this this is all very fascinating stuff for us and I'm sure Evan uh, has something he That's like what to I ask. was going to ask is this 2 gallons of water a day. I actually managed to pull this off once in Las Vegas and it took I don't I, I don't know how I did it. How do you manage to go through 2 gallons of water a day? It's, uh, it's honestly, I mean, I, I've done more research on it. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it might be too much, honestly, but the hack for me is that it keeps me full. It keeps me sort of bloated in a way. And, um, on a game day or, or pre before a game day, I'm, I'm not drinking two gallons, but the past, I think it's like four years I've drank in a gallon every single day. It's just a habit for me now. Two gallons is, is sort of what helps me as far as dieting because dieting is a whole nother – it's complicated, I guess. Yeah. It, it's it's always tough for me to stay away from the treats and um, sugar is sort of my, my addiction. So <laughs> drinking yeah. two, two gallons sort of just – just keeps me away from those those bad habits. Right, and and I also saw kind of you're you're a guy that that does it. And I want to get back to your 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 day because we've only made it to to daycare in the gym so far. But I, I saw on your on your New Year's resolutions that uh, you like to stay away from McDonald's, which which I think is fantastic. But you you have broken down and gotten a McFlurry. Um, but the stretching now. I know you've been working on the splits as probably since a, a, a long time. Let's say that. Uh, how close are we? You, I, I don't think you made it this year, did you? 
No, um, I'm going on. This is year four for me on working on the splits. But honestly, I don't. I don't think I've made a, a real commitment like I have with with maybe some other things. And I've always uh, sort of been into the weightlifting portion, and and I haven't really made a real commitment to to you know, I guess getting the splits. And and just recently, I got a little bit of a head start, I guess, this year, but the past like three months I've been doing like okay. my warm up is, is focused on, on the split and I'm, I'm doing like two minute holds. And <laughs> I do get the camera rolling I'll do on stuff that like stuff, that, man. Get somebody filming through all the day sort of too. Stuff. Not just, not just during my work. Yeah, I'll okay. do it like right before bed or stuff like that. Cool. While I'm cooking. Cool. <laughs> get the, get the wife, get the kids to roll footage on that. That's something I like, I want to see that. And I think a lot of people would like to see that. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I'm 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 getting it done before before the end of 2020. All right. I'll, All right. I'll have the side splits down. Now I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess, in that the last ten years when helping a lot of First Nations out. Um, so I've kind of got a bit of an idea as to the the issues that affect it. But tell me about Onondaga and tell me what life is like there and the challenges that the youth face. I mean, I've been to I've been to a lot of a lot of Native American communities across you know the U.S. and Canada and all of Indigenous country and and I I think you know we're we're really fortunate with the location you know where where we live in Onondaga because um, especially if you're a lacrosse player you're surrounded by by lacrosse you know on the res and off the res so it is it is. You know, in when you're comparing to these other indigenous communities, we are a lot more fortunate because we do have a lot more resources and I guess a lot more help. So I think in that way it's um it's a good thing. And there are a lot of good things about growing up there and and I think I've always considered myself fortunate for for what I what I grew up with with, with no running water and, and you know, essentially just a lot of lacrosse, a lot of sports and in my family. Growing up there was, you know, a lot of life lessons when when I sort of reflect back. I, I do that often and now that I'm you know, looking back and, and now that I'm a parent, I'm able to look at look at those things and see the value in them in them. How important sports were and how important it, it was to not be stuck in front of a, a TV or a video game or your phone where nowadays, you know, my kids are, are right in it all. So I have to find a way to adjust to that. But growing up on a regular reservation, you know, I think the the most special thing about it is you're surrounded by the game of lacrosse. And the fortunate thing for me was I happened to be in love with the game right from a really young age. I was able to surround myself with the game, but, I had, you know, so much help around me, not just my family, but my cousins and a lot of the elders. And, and honestly, just the culture there um, allowed me to fall in love with the game. Speaking with Lyle Thompson, and, and man, I hope I get this right. De Hasanunde. Yep, that's that's uh, pretty accurate. Right. De Hasanunde. De Hasanunde. I've been working on that, Lyle. Um Speaking with Lyle yeah. Thompson, <laughs> and uh, that was good. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I, I want to fly. There's so many things. I get to hang out with your big brother Jer a little bit uh, with the Saskatchewan Rush, and and we kind of sit across from each other on the bus. So I'm always kind of picking Jer's brain, and I know obviously he's somebody that you really looked up to and kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps. So maybe I'll, I'll give you an opportunity just to tell me how much your brother Jeremy means to you and, and the impact that he had not only on your lacrosse game, but, but your life as well. No. Yeah. I, I'm Jeremy's Jeremy was, was the person I wanted to be. Um, right from when I was a kid, I, I always looked up to him. I, I always tell people he ran cross country. I ran cross country. He, he did face house. I did face house. He played both ends. Everything he did, I wanted to do even to, you know, to the T. Like I wanted to run like him. I wanted to cradle the way he cradled. I wanted the same. Um, actually, the the one thing I didn't was the the way he netted his sticks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could never I could never throw with one of his sticks. Just too much holding there for me. But 
I I always looked up to him. And um, that was a point in in time where, you know, me and my brothers all grew up no no drugs, no alcohol. It was a huge thing for for my parents. They they really wanted us. They really steered us in a way to make sure we didn't. And, and we, we made promises to them and they made promises to us. And when Jeremy, when I found out Jeremy had, was into those things, I, I, I was really mad at him and felt like he lied to me. But at the same time, he, his, his experience with going through what he went through with, with the abuse of those things was honestly the biggest family lesson within our family because yeah. Um, in a way, Jeremy sort of took the bullet there and, and he made sure that I learned from it. He made sure that I was going to stay away from those things that, that really hurt a lot of Native American communities right. from that day and, and so on. I've, I've learned a bunch from him. He continues to be sort of a mentor for me and, um, someone I, I can always go to for, for advice. He's, he's definitely, uh, a spiritual leader. He he likes to any question you ask him. He's he's always sort of very thoughtful. Got a spiritual side of, side to him, and he he wants to he wants to dig deep into conversations. Yeah. And, and um, he 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 definitely doesn't shy away, and that's that's honestly what I like about him. Wanted to reflect back on the World Championships about three months ago, and you had the unfortunate injury early on. And I recall running into you at a Walmart. You're in an electric shopping cart with your leg elevated, the crutches in the back, shopping to your kids. I'm looking at you like there is no way you're playing in this tournament ever again. Talking to your dad and he's telling you, you know, think about your future. How did you possibly get yourself back into that final? <laughs> Sorry, Lyle. You're just your phone's a little a little muffled there. I want to make sure that we get your answer here. Yeah, there you um, go. There you go. Perfect. Better now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. First off, I I probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have played in that game, but um, we had the we had the injury bug this year. It was between you know Miles oh. playing with a hurt ankle or or me playing with with the quad contusion. Hogarth going and, down um, too, and even uh, if I'm not mistaken, you had a sick goaltender. Yeah. So. Obviously, Dougie was hurt. That's right. That's right. The hamstring. And, no, no, no. Dougie was hurt, and and Warren was sick. So okay, yeah. Warren was okay. Playing so the not crazy. All right. Yeah, no. I, I mean, and, that was and super. Dougie was hurt, so yeah, that both was. Both our goalies were were sort of not a hundred percent. Yeah, sorry, Lyle. That I mean, to me, like I was so looking forward to to calling those championships and obviously watching you and your brothers play and, and to see it kind of go down in that first game was just devastating. I know it was for you as well, because I, I have to imagine Lyle that playing on a, a world championship for, for the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee means more to you than probably any other lacrosse player on the planet means to play for their country. So I, I know that's a heavy burden to kind of put on yourself, but and I may be off base on that, but is that kind of what got you through that final gold medal game? Is it was that weight that you wanted to carry? I don't, I don't, I don't think it was, I wouldn't complicate it, but you know, I, I thought I could play. I, I didn't really test my leg out beforehand and I sort of just went out. I went out to warm ups and, and once I got out to warm ups, once I got out to the second warm up, where you know we're doing some some four on fours, man up, man down, we're actually playing. That's when I, I sort of was rethinking whether whether I should play, and starting to think about my role. But by then the lineups were already in, so I, I couldn't really back out by then. So I went out, I played, I did what I could, and yeah, I mean, any time I put I put that jersey on, I'm. I'm honestly just trying to represent our people in the best way I can. And um, whether I was hurt or not, I was going to go out there and and give it my all. But obviously, you have to take care of yourself. And you know, once I got out on on the on the floor, you know, playing playing against Canada, I didn't want to I didn't want to put my leg in a situation where it could get injured. So I really had to be conscious and aware of 
of how I was going to play the game. Um, I couldn't play my typical right. my typical game where you know I'm, I'm jumping around, I'm diving around out there, I'm, and I'm fighting for loose balls, stuff like that. So uh, it was it was a lesson learned for me. Um, but the whole opportunity was really at, at the end of the day, it was good for me because I got to. I'm not someone who can sit there and watch a game, especially when I when I know I could I should be playing. Um, but I learned a lot from a lot of the guys, especially Cody, and and just watching. You know what I mean? So and, um, and you had to put those took shoes the most on. I could from the opportunity. You had to put those shoes on display as well, Lyle. Those things uh, were were pretty now. <laughs> yeah, I had to put those on display too. Those are fantastic. That's why. That's why I didn't sit out. <laughs> that was the real reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those things were spectacular, and and so were were was all the apparel from the Iroquois, and and I know uh, Nike Lacrosse has has a lot to do with that, and I saw you and Jer both kind of drop an Instagram post about the new footwear that's come out from Nike Lacrosse. You want to tell me about that? Yeah, uh, the the Hiroshi Seven. So in the past, doing Nike sort of did all of the Thompson Brothers edition shoes. Was, was um, it was labeled a lacrosse cleat or yeah lacrosse cleat but but the the bottom sole the print for the for the cleat portion of it was actually a football made for football cleats and, okay and this time around they're they're you know officially diving into the lacrosse portion there and, and going all in and making it specific to um a lacrosse player and the way we cut the way we move how we like it for, for how light it is or heavy, obviously for football, it's typically a little light, heavier and for soccer it's lighter. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I, um, definitely, definitely my favorite cleat since, since they've, since we've been with Nike. You're down in the Georgia market now this year, full time. Tell us about your new role of the team. Yeah. I mean, um, I am moved down here. I've I moved down for school. And um, fin- finishing up, I guess not finishing up, but um, I, see, I see an opportunity for me to continue to learn in in the art department with graphic design and all that stuff that I that I studied when I was at Albany, but never never went through and finished. Uh, and you know, I took the opportunity to come down here and move my whole family down. So so it was a really big decision, but uh, my wife supported. And, and the kids are the kids are actually liking it. We homeschool them, so yeah. Tell that makes it that made it a little easier. But tell me um, about that, Lyle. I, I I find this very interesting as well, and and I want to talk about your art as well. I watched the feature with uh, with you and Devin Caney that the NLL put out, which was just fantastic, and and you drew that feather, um, which was super cool, man. Uh, I'd like to get one of those framed up myself when he got some extra time. But it, now, do you, do you tell me about the homeschooling that you and Amanda do? I know she kind of carries the load a little bit there, but get back to the typical day and, and, and include your kids on, on how this all works with you homeschooling them. Yeah. I mean, um, we, we take turns. It's, I, I cover, um, I guess PE, physical education and, and, um, art. And we're sort of just getting back into it after, after winter break, which, you know, we, we, we let them have, we, we sure. don't celebrate yeah, Christmas yeah. or anything. But, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, give them a break. Got to give them a break. Yeah. We, we had to give them the break, but, uh, we just thought it was, it was important. Every, everyone's different, but as far as the school and we wanted to sort of see, see what we could do, um, for the kids and, and I guess going away from the typical school and structure in how, you're sitting at a desk and it's, it's like a nine to five job. You know what I mean? I'm, growing up for me, I, I never liked school and I never liked to me. It's, it's what's preparing you for, for that nine to five job or whatever it is. And, right. and I wanted to give my kids, especially at a young age, they're only the ones we're teaching are only four, six and eight. And um, we think it's important for, for them to learn their culture, but also just life, life duties, life lessons. Mm-hmm. Like, like cooking and, and and stuff like that, where you know I didn't I didn't learn how to cook until I was 
honestly, until I had kids, yeah. <laughs> I went to college and I'm still and, learning, uh, Lyle. I'm still learning. Every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still learning, but, man. I'm but still learning. Just little things like that for, for the kids, but also, you know, still continuing to teach them what you do learn in school. Um, we just felt like it gave us more free range to yeah. teach our kids what they're interested in and really just add the fuel to their fires, the things they're interested in. Sure. Now get, get back to the art here because this is kind of something that you just took upon yourself to kind of do and started out doodling, but you've turned yourself into quite an artist and, and now you're continuing your education um, with art. What What is it about art that draws you to it and what specific kinds of art do you like? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's, it's just, I could draw all day. I don't as much. It's actually part of my New Year's resolution is to draw more. Um, it's just hard to find that time. But it's just, you know, for for me, it's just using that part of my mind, being being creative, writing and, and drawing. And something I, I have always tried to tap into was graphic design. It was interesting to me um, and entertaining. I just didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? I, I learned a little bit while I was at Albany. But didn't go much further than that and I could use it you know what I mean and in in the work I'm doing with with Thompson Brothers and in today's day and age um graphic design is sort of a simple thing that that mm-hmm. could go a long way so mm-hmm. it's something I want to I want to add to to what I can do along with sort of that whole department as as far as photos with social media and all of that but at the end of the day, it's all about having a, an artistic mind and allowing you to be creative and, and just have fun with it, just like I do on the cross field or with the lacrosse stick in my hands. I, I try to do the same thing with a pencil. A tough loss a couple of weeks ago to, to Colorado. You're facing one of the top goaltenders in the league. You're coming into a game this week with Buffalo, once again, one of the top goaltenders in the league. What do you take away from the loss to – propel you to the game that coming up this weekend? No, I, I think um, that that loss was sort of sort of an, an eye opener. Um, just because, I mean, I think I think a loss like that is is something we we need, and you know, in the back of our shooting shirts, it says talent is never enough. I think that game was was sort of a wake up call for us because you know we know we know we're a talented group, but we still have some, some coming together to do. And, and just because we've been together for, for a number of years now, at least our core group has been, and it looks like we should be good. We still have to put the work in day in and day out, and we still have to to try to prepare for every team. Because in this league, you know, I mean, any team can pull out a win. Um, and you have to prepare every game. The team, the opponent you're about to face is – is ready to pull off that win because in my eyes, we're, we're, we're the best team in the league. And it's just a matter of putting that together at the right time um, before the end of the year. And, and right now that game was sort of a teacher for us to, to let us know, you know, we still have a lot of work to do. We're, we're, we're getting there. Yeah, no, I think uh, everybody knows where the Georgia Swarm are heading. And uh, led by you, fifth in scoring right now, Lyle Thompson. I'm sure uh, you'll work your way up that ladder. I know the numbers aren't important to you. It's more about the wins. Um, Let me ask you this. Last one here for you, and we appreciate your time here on Last Class, Lyle. Uh, Toughest defender to go up against, toughest goalie to score against? (laughs) Let's see here. Toughest defender. It's so much different in, in box and field because you, you're seeing so many different sure. guys. Yeah, give me the. I just, but, I'm, we're talking box here. We're talking box. Is it is yeah, it Rubish? Um, is it Priolo? Hossick? We're talking pros. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rube, Rubes is is he plays the lefty, so I don't gotta. Right. I'm gonna worry about him, but <laughs> Hoss is definitely one. Hossick. Yeah. And I mean, I I don't have to play against him, but nope. He's he's a pain. I, I get to watch him right. be a pain on on the other guy's best def, best offensive player. But defender of the year, um, yeah. First time playing him in box lacrosse this summer. You know, I got a taste, taste of what he likes to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about goaltenders? No, uh, he, he just 
he's very similar to me on the defensive end because yeah. he's he's just relentless and he's always on your hands and he likes to make you work. And that's sort of sort of my my mindset when I play the game is if if someone's assigned to me, I want to make sure the dude is the guy's working. Um, make sure he's tired by the end of the game. Absolutely. And what about goaltenders? Is it is it Dylan Ward? Is it Del Bianco? Matty Vince? Uh, or maybe even your own guy in practice and Mikey Poulin? No, I got Poulin's number. <laughs> no, just playing. <laughs> no, uh, that's that's a tough one too. Um, probably probably a toss up between between Matt Vink and and Dill. Dill Dill's a hit or miss though. Sometimes I I can get him and love him all over. You know, sometimes I just can't. He's the lefty. Can't it's because he holds a stick in his other hand. It takes you a while to get used to that. Well, I, no, I don't know. I just, uh, uh, he just he 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 shows you that short side, and <laughs> I mean, he's just really quick at yeah. you know, covering it up pretty quick. One of the best in net for sure, Lyle. You're one of the best when you're out of the net. Uh, I really appreciate you coming back on the Cross Classified here. Keep that Shane Jackson in line down there in, in Gwinnett County. I know he can tend to get out of hand a little bit. So keep an eye on Jackal for me and uh, give my best to the Arlotta family. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up in, in Saskatoon when the Swarm come to town. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure, man. Our pleasure indeed and i know uh, the listeners enjoyed that as well that was lyle thompson of the georgia swarm the iroquois nationals former great dane of albany university as well uh be interesting to see where he takes his talents to the outdoor game in the upcoming season evan yeah i think he still has a couple of years left in his Does ml he? contract Does he? Okay. yeah but uh, I well, mean, then I guess it won't be that interesting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, and that's the other crazy thing. We talked about him playing in that World Championship game. He then went and played two field games the following uh, weekend yeah. once again just with a bum leg. Yeah, MVP of the league, top scorer, all the rest of it. Uh, favorite player to watch play the the game of lacrosse, whether it's indoor or outdoor, box field, uh, you know, backyard, you name it. Uh, Lyle Thompson is my guy. Oh, he's my favorite too, and you just never know what he's going to do. But what you all always know is that if they're in a close game towards the end of the game, he's going to take over the game. It's Lyle Thompson time. Lyle Thompson time. De Hossanunde. De Hossanunde. All right, Evan. One more break to come. Fourth quarter is up next. We got a good week on deck. In the NLL Week 7, Stampede Tax, who you got, news and notes, all coming up here on Episode 61 of Lacrosse Classified on the Lax All-Stars Podcast Network. Associated Labels and Packaging is in the business of creating first impressions. They'll help you reflect your company values accurately by offering solutions that fit your product needs. With the latest in printing technology and over 35 years of experience, Associated Labels and Packaging is the perfect fit for your company to take your labels and packaging to the next level. This is Christian Del Bianco from the Calgary Roughnecks. You're listening to Lacrosse Classified on Lacrosse All-Stars Podcast Network. Growing the game one podcast at a time. Welcome back to episode 61 of Lax Class here on the Lax All-Stars Podcast Network. Associated labels and packaging back on board for 2020. My man, Sean Ashworth, and the gang down there at Associated Labels and Packaging. I think uh, I, I've been speaking with uh, with Jasmine over there at Associated Labels and Packaging. I think she's going to uh, hook up uh, some new new taglines, maybe get a new commercial going for, for ALP this, uh, this upcoming year, Evan. So look forward to that. But in the meantime, check him out at Associated-Labels.com. So the boss was up uh, in beautiful Tulamine, uh, which is about three hours away from where, you are, where I am, Evan, uh, up in the mountains, doing some snowmobiling with the family over the weekend. So uh, he's taking a little break from work right now, but you, they're still open at Associated Labels and Packaging. Man, uh, I know that was long there with Lyle Thompson, but that was – that was I, I love talking lacrosse with Lyle. And it's not just about lacrosse. We talk quite a bit about life, which I think well, is the even more interesting part. Well, yeah. I mean, I could, I could, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, we, we should have him back next week and just talk lacrosse with Lyle. Or just maybe we'll have a segment every week and we'll call it lacrosse with Lyle. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But that was that was that was fantastic stuff, and I I I love to do it, man. I love talking lacrosse with Lyle. It just, I just find him a fascinating human being, and he is also my favorite player. That's the thing. He's this amazing player. He's the best on the planet. And from what he came from yeah. and what he had to avoid in life to get to where he is, like it's just an, an amazing story. Well, no. And, you know, I wanted to ask him about going to different reservations and, and what, you know, he tries to instill in these, these kids that are kind of like, like Scheller said, like up in the middle of nowhere on this reservation, probably have never seen the creator's game and don't realize it's, even you know part of their fabric or maybe they do and they've just never had an opportunity to try it i like i can't imagine what Mm -hmm. that experience would be like to travel to somewhere like that and just introduce their game to them like i that would blow my mind well actually part of that if we go back to the last time we had him on the final question i asked him was what's the what's the motivational uh, speech you give to these youngsters when you come to these communities. Mm. I'm thinking it's about episode six or seven if you want to go back and listen to it. Highly recommend you do that. I might go do that. All right. It's time for Stampy Tax. Who you got? Evan, who you got? Jake, who you got? 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 Stampy Tack and Western Wear, proud sponsors of Who You Got. Evan, we keep getting these international winners. Uh, I, I'm hoping my man Kevin Michael Winkler there at Stampy Tack and Western Wear doesn't, doesn't get upset about his shipping bill, having to ship international to all these winners. But, hey, when you have this kind of a podcast, Evan, you're going to get listeners from not just North America, but we got, we got listeners from around the world on Lax Class. Yeah, there's one... There's uh, one in Finland that has talked to me, a few in Australia, England. That was a surprise. You know, go to the World Championships, and there are players, and these are not the transplanted Canadians on the rosters. Mm-hmm. These are the guys from the home country who talk, you know, how much they love the podcast. I'm like, wow. Super right, cool, man. Stunned. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that was one of my favorite things, not to sit here and honk our own horns or anything, Evan, but that was, like, literally one of my favorite things about – the world championships is I'd be, you know, doing a lap around the concourse, whatever, grabbing a hot dog and somebody would come up and go, Hey, are you, are you Jake Elliott? You're, you do lacrosse classified. And you know, it was somebody from Germany or whatever. And it was like, like what? <laughs> like seriously. So it's super cool that, that we've got that kind of outreach and, and uh, people are listening not only for North America, they're, they're the people that are winning who you got right now, but uh, just just prepare yourself for that, Kevin, that, that the day may come when a Who You Got winner needs something shipped to well, uh, New Zealand or something. No, we actually clarify that yet it's America. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah, did not we know did that. clarify that. Okay, okay. Well, that but if, they, if people from around the world want to play along, absolutely love it. Yeah. You can still you can still get bragging rights, just like me, Evan, who won week six uh, just last week. I won. I beat everybody, but I'm not taking the prize. Okay, uh, take it away, man. So here's the first game, and this is the interesting one: Vancouver in Philadelphia on a Friday night. Uh, and of the responses, I just went and looked it up again. The responses are fifty fifty mm. on this game. It's a tough one. Who you got? It is a tough one, Evan. Uh, This is Philly's home opener, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right on that? That's correct. Friday nighter. So I'm thinking maybe no Logan Shuss, right? Friday night game. Yeah, probably not. That's just coming to my mind right there. Man. Uh, I'm going to give you the option again here, Evan. I will pick the team that you don't pick. If you want. Okay, now here's if the tricky part. I'll, I'll, you can I'll, defer. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, now, Dorinda's pick is the Warriors. Just full clarification on it. Um, I'm taking the wings, and I think that's the first problem is no Logan shots, most likely. I, we don't know what his work commitments are, but last year he could not make Friday games on the road. So that's the first problem. The other thing is, Vancouver is traveling three time zones over. 
that typically in the past has given them quite a bit of trouble. So it's like I said, I it, you know, almost ready was ready to flip the coin, but for those reasons, I'm going to take the wings. Okay, well, I, let I'm you make ma- the case for the Warriors. Well, no, I'm a man <laughs> of my word, and I gave you the option. It worked out well for me last time, and Philadelphia was involved in that. Uh, offer of mine there, Evan, where they beat the Calgary Roughnecks, which just happens to be the one game lead I have on you right now. So um, I will take the Vancouver Warriors. They actually have done okay when traveling east uh, against, I recall, a win in Buffalo a couple of years ago as well. So uh, I'm, I'm confident in this Vancouver pick. I'll be interested to see who they start in goal. And... Uh, Look for a big bounce back from Mitch Jones, who I thought was a little subpar in Colorado. And uh, Jonesy's not having two off ones in a row. So give me the worst. All right. Now we got the battle of two red hot teams. Colorado headed to the East Coast, the far East Coast, Mm -hmm. to Halifax. Who you got? I took Colorado last week to beat Vancouver, and they got it done for me. But, man, going into Halifax now, they, I mean, wins over Calgary, wins over Georgia, win over Vancouver. They're rolling after just that one goal loss against Saskatchewan. Now they take on an undefeated Halifax team at home, way across into the Atlantic. They go, I just, oh, man, can Warren Hill outduel Dylan Ward? Hashtag trade Ward. <laughs> Uh, Should we explain the trade ward thing to people that don't understand it? <laughs> yeah, you do, do that while I okay. contemplate this. Okay. Pick. Okay. So there is some idiot. Uh, I think that's the only way to describe him in Colorado uh, with a whole 14 Twitter followers that literally is on a rampage. And I ho- seriously hope he's doing this as a joke, not for serious. That he thinks that all the problems in Colorado is Dylan Ward, and he should trade Dylan Ward. And this week, he posted a picture <laughs> while the ball's at the other end, and Dylan Ward is uh, laying back on the crossbar. It's like, come on, guy, right? He says his whole <laughs> section, section 104, was chanting <laughs> trade war. There's so, another like, lunatic on Twitter. There's a bunch of lunatics on Twitter, but there's another one that thinks they're better off without Eli McLaughlin in their lineup. Mm-hmm. So Team Canada, me. Eli McLaughlin. There's got to be at least 10 teams in the NLL that if Colorado started calling around saying, we want to trade Dylan Ward, what will you give us? Yeah. They'd probably give them like three first-round draft yeah. picks yeah. just to get them. Not happening, not happening. But I'm still trying to get the, the hashtag trending trade word. So if, uh, if you want to get that going, feel free. Man, Evan, I still haven't made a selection here. You want to do it again? I'll give you the option again. <laughs> Okay, let's do it. I'm taking the Thunderbirds. Okay. Um, Dorinda's taking the Mammoth. <laughs> Just so, you know, it's, it, it, she could be five games up on me this week. It's hilarious. Just but, so you know, I, uh, had Halif- reason- I had Halifax written down, but I'm changing mm-hmm. my pick. Okay, and once again, you could convince me on, other, on either team. I think the difference is going to be that a lot of players live in the Colorado market. And you got some living on Vancouver Island and the lower mainland that have to make this monster trip. Like mm. this is further east yeah, yeah. Than, than New York, right? And I mean, luckily it's a flight to New York City and a connection, but I think the Mammoth would be wise what to do what they did during the playoffs last year with Saskatchewan where they yeah, arrived right. two or three days early and got acclimatized. They might I think that they that's might. how they gotta do it, but I'm not convinced that with that much travel that the mammoths are going to do it but like i said you could convince me either way on this one you know what it came down to to me is is dylan ward against warren hill and warren hill has proved a lot of people wrong so far this year but dylan ward is is playing at another level right now and i think he he can and listen if colorado's offense is going to score 12 goals or 13 goals Colorado is going to win a lot of lacrosse games because they got 45 in between the pipes. So I, I'm just and fine. Heck of a yeah, and I'm just fine taking Colorado in that game. I think it's that's the game of the week for me. That's a doozy right there. Uh, Six o'clock Eastern time for that one. 
All right. Oh, let's by move the way, on. before we carry on here for week seven, um, we need to figure out what the winner of who you got either gets or the loser of who you got has to do here before we I know we're early, but I don't want this to sway my picks in any regard. I'd rather just get it laid out on the table. This is what's at stake. And uh, so so we know what we're playing for here, especially if I can't win the weekly prize <laughs> when I win. Well, well, two possibilities, and we'll maybe talk to Kevin about it. Either if, if, if there's a Stampede Tack prize to win, we can do that, or I'll put up the same prize I did on our Canadian Bowl mm. bet, which is the tractor jersey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> tractor jer- hey, listen, Prairie Pride Night's coming. They might have a, a new tractor jersey that I like even more. So, anyways, we'll think about that, okay. but uh, get your wheels spinning because we got to come up with something. All right, carry on. So we go from one Scotia Bank Center to another Scotia Bank Center in Toronto, the old ACC. Toronto facing Rochester. Who you got? Rock. Yeah, I think this one's pretty simple. Um, now, Rochester's got the offense that can cause some havoc. They're going to get a win, Evan. They're going to they're they're going to win some but games. It's going to happen. I, until I'm just, they get the goaltending yeah. and the, the defense down. Show me, right? It's the same thing as and, New York. Show me you can win a game, and then I'll start picking you. And this is a divisional matchup. Yeah. This is Toronto at home. If they want to, you know, get in the conversation of the New Englands and the Halifaxes right now, they need to win this game against Rochester. I'm taking the Rock. Yeah, and when you look at who you got, there's a lot of people taking the Rock and the tiebreaker too. So that should say something in itself. All right. I think this is the game of the week in my mind, the one I want to watch the most. It is Buffalo headed down to Georgia. This should be a, an explosion one way or the other, but who you got? Oh, man, this is another tough one here, Evan. I'm not going to give you the option because uh, I – Matt Vince normally does not play two bad lacrosse games in a row. He wasn't – I don't think he was great in his last outing. I thought Buffalo was a little bit snake bit on their offense. I think it'll wake up this week in Georgia – but I like we just heard from Lyle Thompson last week was a wake up call for them, and I think they have a little little burr in their biscuit, if you know what I'm saying. And and I think they win this game on their home floor against the reigning Eastern champs, Georgia. Now, of course, Georgia burned me at home once already this season, but I'm not betting against them at home. Um, I just like the balance of the Georgia Swarm a little bit better. They're still my pick to be the number one seed when this is all over with. So I'm going with the Swarm. And I think the last game should be a bit of a simple one, but it, who knows, Saskatchewan headed down to San Diego. Who you got? I'm taking Saskatchewan, Evan. I'm going to take Saskatchewan. Oh, this shock, game. Shock, yeah. shock. Uh, uh, By the way, I want to give a shout out to San Diego, Pat Merrill, and and whoever's running the social media accounts or whoever's idea it was. I think really smartly, and and this is something that Steve Govett's never really been shy to do, is that's give injury updates on his players. Everybody knows that Austin Stotts blew his knee out, and he's rehabbing. Everybody knows Casey Jackson's been out with a concussion, but to I think for them to kind of go out of their way and, and let fans know, hey, yes, this is what's wrong with these guys. Here's what they've been doing for the last two, six, eight months, whatever. Here's how they're progressing, and here's their kind of prediction or forecast of when they are going to be able to return to the lineup. And I think that just informing your fan base or just lacrosse fans in general – I don't know why more teams aren't doing this. Injuries are no secret. Like, we know Jesse King broke his collarbone. Like, I, you know, why are, we, why are we tiptoeing around these things? Let the fans know what's going on and when you expect him to return. What's the problem here? Yeah. Like, I mean, how many times have we seen somebody hit the transaction wire three or four hours before games? Like, they are literally waiting until the last minute that they can submit a roster change. And, of course, the fans don't get to see the transaction wires. Um, 
you know, they update, the, oh, I can't remember the last time the NLL updated their transaction listing, but they come to the arena expecting to see somebody as well. Like, he's not there. Like, what the heck's going on? Yeah. You know, and as if they're going to go into this gaming, like Nick Sakavich talked about, they're going to have to start be a lot more transparent oh, about yeah. the injuries. That there's there's, there's heavy an- rules to that in the NFL about when they have to report, what they have to report. So, I'd expect it's all coming. I'm assuming you're taking Saskatchewan to beat San Diego as well, Evan. Yeah, I would take them. I would take them, even though, even without the fact that they're the hometown team, because uh, San Diego. No, San Diego's coming off a win in Vancouver. But I just see so many struggles with that team right now. Uh, they got to sort it out. I think Saskatchewan's a better balanced team. Yeah, and and I think Saskatchewan's kind of looking to to get things going as well. Um, you know, I, I finally December is behind us here, Evan, and the the crazy bye weeks. I know some teams still have some funky schedules coming up, but now, like I, I honestly, I always feel like the turn of the calendar is when the NLL season really starts to kind of crank up, and now we got a full slate of games. We're back into the flow, and there's going to be a, a steady, healthy dose of National Lacrosse League action week to week. So at the end of the day, we have got either you're going to be up three, you're going to be up one, or I'm going to be up one. Yeah, three so sounds good. Happens. Three sounds good. Uh, news and notes is how we end off every podcast here on Lacrosse Classified. Uh, what do I got here? Curtis Dixon is now a member of the Langley Thunder. Uh, Westberg, Del Bianco, Dylan Chan, uh, the Cornwall brothers, Riley Lowen, now members of the Coquitlam Adnax. Yeah, and think about it this way. If they can get those guys into the roster, I mean, that's never a certainty, but if they can get those guys in the roster, how good is Coquitlam all of a sudden? Well, I mean, they they turn themselves into contenders pretty quick. I'd expect to see Marty Dinsdale back in a purple and gold jersey for the summer season as well. It's going to be interesting, but, uh, you know, Pat Coyle there now, the head coach, instant credit accreditation there, and, and guys are going to want to want to come play in Coquitlam back on Saturday nights uh, in the COQ. So see how it all plays out. More to come, I'm sure. I want to give a shout-out to the BCLA president, in one, Jerry Van Beek, who he, along with a, a couple other guys, have been doing this uh, for the last, I want to say, four or five years now, where it's kind of like a, a parent and kid or a father and son New Year's Day lacrosse game here just down the street from my domicile, actually, Evan, is where they do it. But uh, New Year's Day field lacrosse game, the Antiques, the Lower Mainland Masters Group, Jerry Van Beek heading it up. Uh, they had a massive turnout this year. It was a beautiful, sunshiny day, and uh, just looked like a heck of a time. So I think that's a great thing that Jerry and his gang do. You're lucky enough that you can still play field lacrosse at this time of year. Yeah, <laughs> minus seventeen in Saskatoon right about now. Well, the, you know, the, you got to trade some things off for others, Evan. Now, Rich Kilgore stepping down as Six Nations Chiefs head coach. This one's got us confused because, you know, it's he's not in Buffalo anymore. He's not with Six Nations. There's nothing really being said as to what's going on. You know, it's just kind of weird that, going to that be all, getting yeah. promoted. You know, uh, it's it's something that I think we'd all like to know what's happening. Yeah, I I just don't know why you all of a sudden are you know either let go or step away from two pretty cherry gigs as far as lacrosse coaching goes and it's not like he hasn't been successful so i i hope everything's okay with with richie and and it's nothing serious but it's just kind of odd uh to see him no longer employed by either team uh the 32 man u19 canada roster was unveiled a lot of ontario evan little a little bit of BC and a, and a tiny little sprinkle of Alberta throughout those 32-man listed players. And and I listen, I posted this up on Facebook, and I got a couple of comments coming back at me like, well, I'm sure there's more than five lacrosse players in BC that could have made this team. And my response is, I'm sick of hearing that argument. Like, if you're good enough you're good enough and you're going to make the team. And, and I know there's some circumstances involved, especially with select teams where sometimes the parents with the deepest pockets get their, 
their kids on teams that they maybe don't belong on. But when it comes to the national team and, and the U19s, I'd like to think that the best players are making that team. And if it's only five players from BC and one from Alberta, but that's the team that gives them the best chance to beat the Americans for the first time ever, then I'm okay with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I think if you're good like, enough, you're good enough. And if you're not, then like, get better. The Americans have a massive advantage just in the number of bodies they've got to pick from. Yeah. So Canada in this tournament. And you think they're worried about how many are from California and how many so, are from New Jersey and how many are from Alabama? Like they don't care. Okay. And let's put it, let's be honest here. How much of an impact has the Hill Academy had on that roster? Massive. Absolutely massive. And and they're doing some good things out here as well. And it's just population again. There's just more lacrosse players in Ontario than there is in BC and Alberta. It's just simple math, which I know you love, Evan. Uh, what else do we got here? I want to talk about the young bucks around the gym here, Evan. More and more, as I've been, you know, working out here, I've been seeing more and more young guys like coming out of U sixteen, because we can't call it midget anymore, apparently, Evan. Uh, that are in the gym working out on a almost a daily basis here. And and I just think back like when I was 16, 17, 18 years old, like I, wa- I wasn't in the gym working out every day on my, on my days off, man. And these kids are starting to take the game so seriously and fitness and, and strength and power and all the rest of it is such a big part of it now. It's impressive to see how dedicated these young bucks have gotten to the sport of lacrosse. Well, think of it this way. We just talked about Lyle Thompson's workout regimen. He's the best in the world. For a reason, he works on it. There you it's go. Not, there's part of it is just natural talent, but most of it is how hard he works. Yeah, you put those two things together, you got the best player on the planet right there. Um, couple of transactions as far as the NLL goes. I know we're running way long here on Lax Glass. Thanks for hanging with us. Derek Downs traded to Calgary to fill the void for Jesse King, who's going to be out for a while, along with Dane Doby. So Derek Downs in his second year gets moved from the Black Wills for a couple of third-round picks. Uh, Travis Getz retained on the active roster as well. Uh, Ryan McLean moved to the practice roster. Jordy Jones-Smith back on the active. Jeff Cornwall reactivated as well. So it looks like uh, Justin Robinson and, and Holden Garland might be sticking around the active roster as well. Well, and I mean, we were heavily impressed with Justin Robinson. I He's probably going to be a healthy scratch a lot in his first year, but guess what? So was Matt Hossick. Yeah. Right. Bang so it, it, it's Derek Keenan's system that you, you t- typically take a year to get to learn the team, learn the systems. Look at Connor Robinson. He played three games in his yeah. first year. You want, you want no. guys clawing to get in the lineup. Good players. You don't want to be forced into injecting youth into your lineup if you don't need to. And you want to integrate them slowly. And, I I mean, Saskatchewan's done a heck of a job with it. You think of the young guys that have matured and, and come along. Pretty impressive stuff so far. Uh, we got to get out of here, Evan. That was a jam-packed episode of Lacrosse Classified right there. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, Impure Vital Labs, Vancouver Warriors, G. Wilson Construction, Stampede Tack and Western Wear, and associated labels and pack. Did I already say associated labels and packaging? Evan, the sponsorship is is probably going to change here uh, in the coming weeks. We're still a little in flux as far as who's going to be retained and who's coming on, who's not. Uh, so we'll just kind of see how that plays out in the coming weeks here. And by the same token, if you've got an interest in sponsoring the podcast, always reach out to either one of us, yes. and you know we'll we'll. You know, get you on the show. Good point there, Evan. All right, let's get out of here. For uh, all our sponsors, I just thank for Lyle Thompson for coming on the program, Jeff Shatler, and you, the listener, for listening to Lax Class every single week. Don't forget to sign up for who you got. Do it early because it could come down to who signed up first. It really could. So don't wait. Sign up for who you got. Also, subscribe to the podcast wherever you find your podcast. You'll find the cross classified. Subscribe, and it's taken care of. Follow us on social media as well. He is at Shem Lax. I am at PXP for sports. The show is at Lax Class. That's it. Episode 61 is done for Evan Sheminar. I've been Jay Kelly, and for the fastest game on two feet, and for the creator, 
Enjoy the games, everybody.